Well, good morning. morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. morning. Amen. Amen. I am not a uh, pastor, as you know. I'm a surgeon here in Lynchburg, but welcome. Let's set a couple of ground rules. Um, How many, uh, by show of hands, how many of you believe that America matters? Raise your hand. All right. That's good. I'm probably in the right place. How many, uh, let me ask another question. How many of you all are veterans? If you would raise your hand. If the rest of you, uh, other than those uh, gentlemen, all gentlemen that raised, if you would please stand with me and thank these men for their commitment to our family and to our country. <laughs> all right, a couple more questions. How many of you all believe that your family matters to you? If you would please raise your hand. Good. How many, again, I told you I'm not a pastor, but how many for you faith matters, your faith? I'm not here to preach today. How many of you all believe that your fundamental freedoms matter to you and that our matters, our fundamental freedoms, our ability to meet this morning and to speak together? Sure. And how many of you all believe that tomorrow needs to be a better day? It's for our children and for our grandchildren. Well, Ms. Frederick, I am at the right place, ma'am. What, what Amy told you, she was a young mom. What she didn't tell you, she has children that are five, three, and one years old. So let's give her a hand. <clears throat> well, my friends, America is at a crossroads. America is at a crossroads. And I didn't come here today to politic. I didn't come here today to tell you who to vote for. Or I did come here today to tell you to vote. Because exactly what Amy said is exactly right. Your values matter. Your beliefs in your family, as you just testified to me, your belief in your faith, your belief in our fundamental freedoms, and your belief in our future, those are core values, and they do matter. And I believe America's at a crossroads. The gentlemen that raised their hands, I won't ask them, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer. I've never met a veteran that signed up to fight for socialism. I have never met a veteran that signed up to vote, to to fight for socialism. And if you believe along with me that we're walking down that path, that too many people are trying to define your values for you, and those same people are spending a lot of your tax money on those values that they've defined for you, that ain't right. It's just not right. And that's why I stand before you today. I also have a young family, and I don't need to be here. I've been a surgeon in our community. I've been very, very successful. I don't really need to be here. But I absolutely need to be here. Me and everybody else like me that cares about our country, cares about our fundamental freedoms. I've got, I don't call you guys seniors. I call you seasoned citizens. I've got seasoned citizens in my family as well, and I love them dearly. My mom and dad are 80 and 85 years old. If I'm not going to stand up for them, why do I exist? Let me tell you a little bit about Obamacare, because that's really what I came to speak with you about today. Most people are very, very concerned, and most of the politicians and most of the rhetoric that you are hearing is about how we're going to pay for Obamacare. And let me just put it in perspective. Hang with me for a second. There are 904,000 Virginians today being served under Medicaid. Medicaid is the state-run health care program for low-income folks. Medicare, as you know, is a federal program for, uh, they call it the elderly, I say seasoned citizens, and for disabled folks. Medicaid, 904,000 Virginians, and there are 8 million Virginians, so roughly 11% of Virginians, one out of every nine people that you and I see every day on the streets and in our grocery stores, are being served under Medicaid. Under Obamacare, that is projected conservatively to increase by an additional 420,000 people. So I don't know about you, but I don't know too many businesses that can absorb a 40, 45% increase in the number of people or supplies that they've got to provide virtually overnight. That's a huge um, uh, challenge for any organization. If funding, if paying for Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act, and I underline the word affordable because that's the way that it was spun, and I say spin by the spin masters in D.C., if, a, if that is the 800-pound gorilla in the room, in my humble opinion, the 1,000-pound gorilla in the room, even bigger than funding Obamacare, 
is providing Obamacare. My friends, there are not enough surgeons as me or nurses or physical therapists or nursing home beds or ICU beds in the Commonwealth today to provide that care to an additional 420,000 people. And yet you can't just turn a key and create one of me. College, medical school, internship, residency, and you want somebody to have a few years of experience before they're cutting on your wife's gallbladder or your husband's hernia. You just can't create enough people to provide that care overnight. Well, if funding Obamacare is the 800-pound gorilla and providing the care is the 1,000-pound gorilla, the 2,000-pound gorilla in the room that I believe, and I fervently believe this, is people's expectations and people's perceptions. My friends, we've sort of gotten caught up in this rhetoric of hope and change and this concept that, well, everything's going to be perfect and it's going to be provided for us. I see a lot of you shaking your hands. No, nothing in life is free. And if it's worth fighting for, it certainly isn't free. Our fundamental freedoms are granted to us, in my opinion, inalienably by God. And those are free, but they don't come free. And until we're going to be able to get out and communicate to you, the people, we, the people, that that care isn't going to be the same care that currently we enjoy when we go down and see our doctor, when we can have that, that heart catheterization procedure done in a timely fashion. Look at all the other socialist uh, countries across the world, and I think you'll see a difference in the, in the future of Obamacare and what it could certainly look like. So now, what do we need you to do? I don't need you to get out and vote for a particular person. I didn't come here to do that today. I think you know who I want you to vote for and what it suggests would change this country around. But we do need you to vote. You have absolutely got to get out and speak your mind, regardless of what your mind is, because your values do matter, and America matters. And I appreciate the time. I appreciate you all coming out this morning. It means a great, great deal to all of us. Speak out and let your values ring true. So thank you very much this morning.